really big win for us uh, Saturday. Um, I think we beat a good team. Beat a good team on senior night. Um, the Coastal's done some really good things this year. You know, one point loss at, Ar at uh, Arkansas State overtime at Georgia Southern. So beat a good team and uh, found a way to win. And obviously it's not all perfect. It never is. But we did find a way to win the game. And so we're excited about that. Offensively, I thought we got in a really nice flow, nice tempo. Um, you know, in time you can have 27 first downs and 9 of 15 on third down. I mean, all those things are really good. We did have the one turnover at the end of the game, but I thought there was a nice flow to the offense and um, throwing the ball, you know, about 350 yards, throwing to different guys and still had 217 yards rushing. So good effort offensively. Uh, really excited for Caleb to be the Sun Belt. Offensive player of the week this week. We're really excited about that. Defensively, I, th I thought you know we really hung in there. Uh, forced five punts, got two turnovers. Uh, we're excited about Cortez being the defensive player of the week this week in the Sun Belt. Also, Cisco had a really good game. Um, you know, they. I'll give Coles a lot of credit. I thought they did some really good things. Kind of some tendency breakers for them. Uh, it, Peyton was actually the starter this year for them at quarterback. The, I think the. First four or five games this year when they beat Kansas, he's a really good thrower. Uh, he was the second one they played in there. Carpenter's the runner, run the option. I thought they did a nice job of throwing it with Carpenter and running it with Peyton. It's kind of, uh, you know, we, we didn't expect to see near that much option with Peyton as the quarterback as we saw. But so, anyway, they did a good job. Uh, we talked about it last week in the press conference. They do a lot of things, and they do them pretty good. So, but we hung in there defensively, and like I said, forced them to punt enough, got a couple turnovers, which was key to us, and got a couple really good stops at the end of the game. So, you know, the, like I said, we found a way to win, and that's the most important thing. And, uh, you know, now we have to travel south to uh, Lafayette this week to take on a really good Cajun team. When you look at what they've done, I think they're very impressive to me in all three phases. Uh, they're physical in all three phases of the game, and uh, they're very well coached when you look at what they're doing. They're number one in scoring offense right now, and they're number one in scoring defense right now. So I think from last year, when you look at it, I think uh, the biggest improvements on their football team in taking a step forward is I think you have to start defensively. And you know some of the things they've done defensively, which I'm not shocked by any stretch. I think Ron Roberts is a really good football coach. His defensive coordinator was a head coach at Southeastern for a long time, and uh, I think he does a great job on defense, and uh, they've certainly improved there. Like I said, I'm not surprised because I know what Ron can do, what he did at Southeastern, and um, I was telling somebody, uh, just joking or whatever, but it's true, the, the week that LSU played Alabama, you know, and a couple of weeks ago, whenever that was, I don't know, but the trivia question, you know, the – the co-coordinators at Alabama, Pete Golden and Carl Scott, and the defensive coordinator at LSU, all three of them got their start under Ron Roberts. And they all give Ron Roberts a lot of credit at Delta State and Southeastern. So just goes to show you, I've, I think the world of Ron as a coach, but uh, I think he's done a really good job with their, de with their defense. I think they're much improved at quarterback. I'm really impressed with, uh, with Levi Lewis. He actually played a couple series against us last year, but he was the backup guy last year, but coming in, he just seems to have a great grasp of what they're doing offensively and a very accurate thrower. The other thing I think they've done, is they've, they've kind of added some pieces. Jamarcus Bradley's back. Uh, he hurt us last year, number two. He's still their leading guy. He's got 44 catches, but I think they've done a nice job of adding some pieces around Bradley to complement what they're doing in the, in, in, the, uh, in the passing game. So. You know, other than that, uh, same run, the same run game. Offensive line's really good, and they have the same three backs that they've had the last several years, not just last year with Coach Napier. If you remember the year before, it was the same guys, Trey Regis, Elijah Mitchell, and Calais. And they all bring a little something different in a sense that, you know, Regis is a true power guy, uh, Calais is a true speed guy, and then Mitchell can do both. So, uh, you know, th those guys are – certainly uh, hard to deal with so but anyway we're excited it's week 12 you know rivalry weekend or whatever and we have a lot to play for so we're also excited to um, I don't know how many times this has been but it's been multiple times uh, to get the ESPNU slot I think is really good for our program for the athletic department for the university as a whole to uh, I don't know I think this has got to be what at least three or four 
something this year that we've had an opportunity to play on national TV, which I think is, is a big deal for our program. So any questions? I haven't really at all, and uh, you know, uh, Scott McDonald has, you know, as, as as athletic director. I think he's looked into it too, and I think we had about a two-minute conversation last week, you know, just about, you know. So, I haven't really dove into that, you know. And uh, I mean, as a head coach, I mean, you always have to plan ahead, and maybe look at a couple, you know, different scenarios. But I haven't, you know, got into it. Probably like, you know, I've, I haven't gotten online and read one thing, to be honest with you. So it's just, you know, when the season and the way the season is and you go, you go, you go, I just don't really have time, you know, for that. Coach, entering this week, um, and I know you guys have been in football for a long time, but entering this week, is there always that added pressure of, you know, you got to get one more win to get six, and then also six might not be guaranteed to get to a bowl game like last year. Is there any pressure entering this week? Oh, there's always pressure, and there's been pressure, you know, really in every game, you know, to try to, to achieve what you would like to achieve. And uh, but I think, you know, putting everything else aside, I mean, this is an opportunity to, to get bowl eligible. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. I think it's a good, uh, it's a good goal to achieve. And we talked about it Friday night at the team meeting that, um, you know, last year we were six and four and lost the last two. It was a deal that although we got bowl eligible and that was the first goal, well, it's just a real good taste in your mouth, you know, over the over the break and stuff. So, you know, maybe we might have an opportunity to to win the last two and at least uh, you know, at least leave yourself with a decent taste in your mouth heading into the off season and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot to play for, obviously, regardless of the situation. Um, the last time y'all went down to Cajun Field, uh, Caleb really had this coming out party for uh, you know, a record showing day for him. Um, you know, I guess you, you're going back to seeing the crime, so to speak. Just, you know, how, how do y'all feel about going, going down there and playing that atmosphere? I mean, we're excited to, to, to get there. It's a tough place to win and, you know, different coaching staff now and different situations and what they're doing offensively and defensively and all that. But um, you know, I think any time I go down there, you know, and play, it's really good. And stuff and uh, usually a good um, good atmosphere and uh, good football team. Um, look, looking in on defensively with Donald being out for a half, will Ty Shelby get the start then? That's probably moving forward. Yes, I mean that, I think that looks at it. Uh, you know, he'll Ty will play more reps. I mean, White will play more wet, uh, reps, and uh, you know Sam Miller. We're fortunate, you know, he's back and stuff. So. You know, when you look at the situation with, you know, with with uh, Ty and with uh, with Ty Shelby, with Ivan White, with Kerry Starks, with Sam Miller, we got four guys that have played a lot. You know, so I mean, obviously we love that Donald, but you know, we do have four guys that have played a lot, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, they'll play good, and then we'll certainly play Donald in the second half. Yes, the uh, the obligatory uh, Brandy is bad to question. I have no idea, you know, and it's just, it's unfortunate really that, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just been a, a deal where it's happened, you know, and like I said, I mean, there's two, t there's a couple times that I think he felt really good about being back. We thought he was going to be back and you know, he just, it's just those high ankle sprains, you know, and you tweak it again and, you know, and I don't know. Get your, but, you know, the thing is about those, you have to give them enough reps in practice to be effective in the game. But then you take a chance that in practice that, you know, so I don't know, there's a fine line there. And I know he's frustrated and, you know, I don't know. Maybe this is the week. I know he loved the play because, you know, he's about 40 miles west of there. And I know he'd love to be there. Hey, Coach, you got to ask your reaction. Remember you saw that 98-yard catch on the sideline. What was going through your head during that whole sequence? I just, you know, when you kind of see the play unfold and it's, it's something that, um, you know, Marquise has the op he has the option of either hooking up as a part of the RPO or he can take it deep, depending on what they do. And it just didn't look like, by the structure of the defense, it was going to be a deep ball. And uh, somebody was, uh, one of my friends was referring to me uh, Sunday yesterday when he called and said, well, I love that double move. It wasn't a double move, actually, because he ran and then Caleb was thinking he was going to stop, but the safety came all the way down. 
you know, they spun it all the way down. He just kind of ran right by him and stuff. So, but now what I was thinking is, is once he caught it, that'd be somebody pretty fast to catch you. I'm really happy for Marquis, you know, to, to, to get that. But, uh, and then for Ian Caleb to, to get a record, that's pretty cool too. So. Now look, looking at Caleb, I mean, this is going to be his, um, uh, could possibly be his last game for this program as much as he's been around here. And you look at him and, you know, he's kind of, he's always kind of had that, you know, that, that, that cool demeanor going on, you know, it just keeps things light in the room. And how do you think that's, you know, affected this football team and helped y'all move through some tough times? Oh, I think it's helped us tremendously. I think he's been a really uh, huge asset for this program. And uh, I agree with that in the sense that, you know, he has, he has a demeanor that, you know, nothing really gets to him. But the thing that's that you can't underestimate uh, underestimate about Caleb, he's a fierce competitor. You know, so yeah, I mean, you see him around the fuel house, and you see him, and he's a little lighter. In what he's doing, um, you know, Caleb gets along with everybody. The defensive, which that helps too. The defensive guys, the offense, it doesn't matter. In, in the building, coaches, administrators, everybody gets along with Caleb because he has that demeanor about him. But what you cannot underestimate with him is he is very competitive. You know, he gets out on the field. And the other thing that you can't underestimate about him is how tough he is. I mean, the guys took some shots in four years and hadn't flinched. You know, you realize, I mean, he ain't even came to the sideline. Like, you know, I got, I got, you know, I tweaked an ankle, I tweaked this, I got shook up a little, you know, whatever. I mean, you think about it. And we got to thinking about it several weeks ago, Coach Kubik and I, and I don't ever remember him one time. Not only has he not missed a practice or a game, but I don't ever remember him even coming to the sideline. And stuff, and uh, but you go back and look at it when you do what he does. I mean, you're gonna get hit, and he took some big shots, and took a couple of other night too, and he gets up, and but I think that's that toughness and that competitor in him, and uh, you know, and stuff. So yeah, obviously he's been a lot to us. Hey, Appreciate it, coach. Thank, Thank you, coach. Appreciate it.